Hello, my name is Lenny Zelter. I teach malware analysis at Sands Institute, and today I wanted to show you how you can easily redirect network traffic in your malware analysis lab. This is especially relevant for those malware samples that are trying to reach out to a malicious system while using an IP address. And if you wanted to see what would this malware do if it succeeds at making that connection, while examining that program in your isolated lab, then you need to find a way to redirect that IP-based network connection to a system that you can control. And so I have this example that I think you're going to find useful. Let me take you into my lab. Here, I was analyzing a piece of malware, and when I was examining the laboratory network traffic, I noticed that my infected system, which in this case is .87.1, 130 was trying to connect to this particular IP address, but I'm analyzing this malware in an isolated lab, and therefore it is unable to access that IP address. And yet I want to know, why is it trying to connect to it? I could see in Wireshark that it's trying to connect to it on port 80, but I want to see the connection properties. So what do I do? Well, I'm going to configure my system in a way that allows this malware to connect to this IP address without ever leaving my lab. And here's how I do that. In my lab, I'm using a Linux distribution that I maintain. It's called Remnix, and it contains a number of very useful malware analysis tools. And here are some of the tools that are useful for this particular scenario. Now, I'm going to exit Wireshark, because I don't need it at the moment. And then I'm going to launch a web server that will be running in the background. I'm doing this because Wireshark showed me that my malware wanted to connect to port 80. So I'm going to launch a web server. Now, I need to make sure that regardless of what IP address my malware tries to connect to, it will be able to reach this virtual machine that's running Remnix in my lab. And the command that I have on Remnix to do that is the following command, accept dash all dash IPs start. Now this command uses IP tables and it configures my Linux virtual machine in such a way that regardless what IP address malware tries to connect to, it'll be redirected and intercepted by my Linux box. And if this malware is gonna be trying to connect to a web server using some IP address, then as you could see, my Linux box will receive that connection. Now I'm going to launch Wireshark. And I will tell it to begin capturing network traffic. Now that Wireshark is running, I'm switching into the Windows virtual machine that I have in my lab. This box is designed to be infected. And I'm going to double click on the malicious program that I'm trying to analyze. Double click. Now my malware is running, presumably. And I can see whether Wireshark will show me any interesting activity that perhaps I could not see before. So let me switch back into my virtual machine running Remnix where Wireshark is active. At this point, I'll be examining my network traffic to see whether any anomalous behavior is seen in Wireshark. So let's take a look. Now look at this. I can see that Wireshark is showing me HTTP traffic. That was not visible to me before. That's available to me now because I was using IP tables to redirect this IP address based connection to my Linux box that's pretending to be the attacker's malicious web server. Now in Wireshark, I can right click on the traffic. I can tell Wireshark to show me details of this connection by perhaps following the conversation, now I can see the kind of information that was not visible to me before, and I can react accordingly, I can draw my conclusions, I can derive my network-based indicators of compromise. And all of that was possible because of this quick tool that I implemented on Remnix. It's just a wrapper around IP tables. The command is accept-all-ips-start. 
Now, this is one of the tools that's available to you as part of this freely available toolkit that you're welcome to download off remnex.org. My name is Lenny Zeltzer, and I hope that you find this toolkit useful.